Hey guys, um, I hope everyone is well. Uh, I'm Jim Partridge, I'm a modder and mapper, and I wanted to talk about um, the basics of how games get made, or at least how I think games get made, and, and the sort of starting principles, um, and some misconceptions that people have about uh, game design, if you like. So, uh, I'm using Half-Life 2 just because it's really old, but it is a, just a very simple way of, of, of explaining the, the principles that I wanted to talk about. Um, so for every game that you're building, it starts life as a very simple um, tech demo, if you like, where you just have a series of coloured blocks, uh, maybe, and the player is a uh, you know, has, has some abilities, be it a top-down game, maybe, or, or first person as it is here. But essentially what you're doing is you're building some abilities for the player to have so if you think about this right at the very beginning of half-life 2 we have the crowbar that's it prior to this we didn't even have the crowbar we we ran across rooftops um just using the abilities that we had and those abilities were that we could move forwards and backwards and left was right and move and jump and you know we couldn't sprint like we can now but because we didn't have the uh the atv suit but you know each of the abilities that we had were a tool for us to use okay um so these tools that you give to the player are essentially the core part of the game. You know, that's where you start uh, your design from. Um, and you dream up all sorts of interesting abilities. So if you think about the gravity gun, or you think about the portal gun from Portal, if you think about uh, the shove mechanism in Left 4 Dead, or you know any of those things are a tool that the player is given to learn how to use and to master. Um, that is then... Uh, we then create. We, we then need to test those skills that the player has been given. Okay, so at the moment I've got this crowbar uh, and I can jump and run. And when I turn this corner, there are a couple of bad guys. One of which is a melee bad guy. He has to run to me to hit me, so I've got some time to see what's about to happen. The other guy doesn't start shooting before he stops hitting me, so I've got some time to absorb that. But you know, essentially, I'm testing my crowbar ability there, right? So I hit you, you drop. That's fine. Uh, very, very simple. At the same time, I've picked up the pistol, so now I have a second ability that they've given to me, and we now need to learn how this ability works. Now, you would think that, you know, a gun is a fairly straightforward ability that the player needs to learn. However, um, you yeah, know, think about the accuracy, the, you know, the, the, the sound of it, how do you know it's going to make an impact when you know you've, you've hit something uh, or not. Uh, so, we have to learn these 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 pieces now. So, um, so we move through, first we get our first bag of, you know, now we've got a gun. Great, so we're starting to learn how to shoot at a distance. Now, um, because he has a pistol, he doesn't come running all the way up to me. If he did, you know, I probably would have preferred to switch to the crowbar and save my bullets, but he stayed back, so it's more of a sort of a shooting range, so I can start getting used to it. Um, and the the layout of the stairwell is designed for that. It's designed that he will stay there and I can shoot him and you know it gives me a bit of distance and something between us uh, to create that shooting gallery ability. Uh, same thing here with the stairs. Once again we've got a bad guy. He's silhouetted against the sun so easy to spot and uh, once again I get another chance to test my shooting ability. Um, and then finally we get to the train line and uh, here we have a uh, a space that is entirely designed to test my abilities with this pistol. Okay, the layout—I mean, the look and feel of it—is obviously City 17. It's Eastern European. They might have had those design ideas in their minds about the sort of environment it is. But the um, the abilities that I have uh, does, uh, drive the environment that we experience in the game. Okay, so if you think about uh, most of this area Half-Life 2 and the early areas mostly I have guns, it's before the gravity gun and stuff like that and so the spaces I, I can, uh, I'll i be playing in can be fairly urban, they can be familiar to us as streets and houses and things like that there's no need for us to have abstract spaces like you would find in the Citadel at the end of the game where you've got these big open spaces because you've got the super gravity gun and you're firing these energy balls all over the place um, all of this is a uh, 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 that space, that environment, is designed around the super gravity gun's abilities. This space is designed around the pistol's abilities. Okay? So, um, you know, we've got some barrels, which we could blow up now, but we'd be silly too because we'd probably injure ourselves. 
Um, the trains come in so we can get over the train line. Now what we're doing here is we're separating ourselves from the uh, the targets. Yeah? So the train's going to pull away, meaning that I can't get back over there um, easily, should I say. And uh, and so I'm, f I'm sort of pushed to, uh, you know, get to use get used to this uh, this pistol it's a, tra it's a training area but the the point is the environment the train line that we have here uh, the gully that the train runs through um, is is a result of a, it's a design decision based upon the abilities of the player at this time yeah we need a way to separate the player away from the bad guys at this point um, and so this was you know we could have had a river maybe or something like that or a sewer some kind um, or you know a freeway but um, it was designed to uh, and actually sorry saying that I can get back it's not something but it's, it's harder to do that when someone's shooting you and you can imagine the amount of space you have to cover to get back there with, to hit them with the crowbar you take an awful lot of damage so you know they're pretty sure that you're going to be staying over here trying to find cover or at least you know doing what you can to shoot your way out um, this kind of principle around the fact that the environments that we're playing in are always designed around the player abilities is, is sort of 100% the case. Apart from maybe vistas where you've got like a really nice thing to look at, uh, for the most part though, you will always you should always look at the space in terms of how is it testing the abilities of the player. So I think you know in terms of designing a game, you start with well here's a cool ability that I've given to the player encoded uh, and that works pretty well. Here's an enemy who will test that ability. These particular guys are the, these metricops with pistols are designed to test the abilities I have right now in this game. If I had to, uh, you know, the super gravity gun or the AR2, they would be far too easy. They're not testing my abilities. You know, to do that, you need the uh, the hunters or something like that to 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 test the player's abilities and to help the player uh, get better with those. Um, but that's that's sort of the progression of the game. So each weapon you pick up is a new ability, um, and uh, and then the game changes uh, to design it. And that's why Ravenholm is quite a very is a very different area to the rest of the game because Ravenholm is teaching you how to use the gravity gun. It's designed for tight spaces. It only has zombies. There's no uh, projectile weapons. You know, not, there's no one who's going to shoot you from a distance uh, because it's about you know, picking things up and throwing them, and, and, and you know, and making and doing that in, within a certain period of time, because the zombies are closing in. Uh, your time is limited, so you have to pick things up and throw them and kill the zombies as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, and you'll find this all the way through. And so, um, the environments that they come up with are very much, you know, designed around that. If you think about uh, another example, is the uh, Highway 17, where you've got the jeep. That environment is obviously big, long stretches of road, uh, big open spaces because you need to cover a lot of ground in the in the jeep and design it that way. Uh, so yeah, just keep an eye out for that when you're playing games and think about what ability do I have and how is it this environment has been designed to test that ability that I'm I'm playing with right now. I find that really interesting to look at. So maybe you will too. Thanks.